Investors looking for outsized stock gains this year might be wise to look outside the U.S. That's the opinion of hedge fund manager Mark Yusko, CIO of Morgan Creek Capital. Nice to see you, Mark. Thanks for having me. Generally speaking, you think the U.S. is overvalued by and large? I think it's fairly valued to overvalued in certain sectors, depending on where you look. But generally speaking, we think it's closer to overvalued than undervalued. W where is it not? Where is there an opportunity in the U.S.? You know, we think there are a few opportunities in healthcare. Probably outside biotech. Biotech looks a little frothy to us, but other healthcare names we think are interesting. Uh, airlines and transportation we think looks pretty good. The cruise lines and, and uh, things that depend on oil as an input cost. Uh, and then certain areas of technology where there's high growth we think are still reasonably priced, not give me, cheap. Give me one idea there. You know, um, if you think of a, a name like a, a Priceline or a Netflix, where the growth is just really, really good. You saw the big surprise this morning on Netflix. So those are examples. You have been a China bull for, for quite some time. Long time. Yeah, you have. I love China. Before. I love China. All right, so we got some data not too long ago, a yep. couple days ago here, that the growth has slowed to yep. a level that every other country is envious of. But are you reconsidering anything about China at all? You know, the, the key there is just as you said. It's a level that everyone else would love to have, 7%. And the thing about GDP growth is high GDP growth usually doesn't translate into high stock prices. If you think over the last five or six years, Chinese equity market's gone down a lot, even though their GDP growth has been seven, eight percent. So what's happening now is what I call quality better than quantity. So what we want is quality growth. So they're transitioning from infrastructure and investment to consumption. And there are five sectors that do really, really well when that happens, healthcare, retail, alternative energy, e-commerce, things like that. And VIP Shop is a stock that oh, you've owned. My you love it. favorite. Company. Well, okay, Love so it. it's had a very strong performance. Yep. So the question is, is it too late to get in if you're not in? It's it's too late if your time horizon is a week or a month or you know a year even because I don't know what's going to I don't know what's going to happen in any week, month, or even twelve months. But I, I am confident of a couple things: that this model, which is basically TJ Maxx stores without stores, so they sell overstock merchandise to investor or to uh, consumers in China online. So they have much higher margins. You know, TJ Maxx is a $40 billion company. Ross Store is a $20 billion company. VIP Shop has gone from almost nothing a few years ago to almost $18 billion. So we think there's a lot of room to grow. And they have three times the size of the consumer market that we do in the U.S. Within Asia, you're also a big fan of Japan. You actually think Japan yeah. will outperform the U.S. over the next five to ten years. Yep. Is yep. this simply the reforms there that have really taken a hold? I'm a big fan of Abenomics. I think Abe-san and, and Kuroda-san are really great leaders. And I think any place where there's great leadership, you have great opportunities to make money. Uh, but I also think Japan is, is just math, right? In the U.S., you're buying peak margins, very high margins, and peak multiples. Okay. In Japan, you're buying trough margins and trough multiples, kind of like the United States in 1982. It was hard to go wrong shooting fish in a barrel. I think the same thing's true in Japan today. And even after this huge run over the last two years, the PE of Japan is lower because their earnings are growing mm -hmm. so fast. And you like financials in particular in Japan. The financials are, are really a, a pent-up play or a coiled spring play on the growth that's coming back to Japan. I want to move to Russia because you wrote a potential surprise for this year was yeah. the performance of Russian equities. And yeah. if anyone read that and looked at what happened in Russian equities last year, they exactly. might have thought, what is going on in your mind? Oh, I got lots of Twitter haters hating <laughs> on me on that one. <laughs> I would think so because it was an oil play. People sold Russian yeah. stocks. Oil prices went down. Yeah. Listen, you're bullish on Russia. Russian equities have recovered. Oil prices, not so much. Not so, so, much. so what has happened here? Well, a couple things. So really all of the loss last year in Russia was currency. You know, as oil prices fell, the ruble started to collapse. It went down 45 percent. The market went down 45 percent. Stocks in ruble were actually flat because they were so cheap to begin with. I mean, you're talking about oil companies selling at two and three times earnings. You're talking about the biggest bank, spare bank, selling at three or four times earnings. So these are real businesses. You know, spare bank has 62% deposit market share. Name a bank around the world that has that, no one. So these are real businesses, but there was fear about Russian sanctions, about the Ukraine crisis. Uh, I think a lot of Tempest in a teacup concern, but still there was concern. So coming into this year, you had to say, well, as long as they stabilize the currency, which they did on December 15th, the central bank raised interest rates from 10 to 17. If you look from that day to now, 
The Russian market's up almost 60%, 6-0. It, it, is it the best performer of the international markets? It's one of them, for sure. For sure this year. Yeah. yeah. Mark Husko, great to talk to you. Thanks for having Thanks me as for always. Coming in. I'm Rhonda Schapler for The Street.